Nobody's better at getting people on the right path than our own financial expert, Dave Ramsey. He joins us now live from Brentwood with answers to your money questions. Dave, how you doing this morning? Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. You know, we're just excited that you took the time to let us answer some of these questions. We've been soliciting these from our viewers all morning long. First one up, this is from Jessica. She says, I'm 30 years old. I recently purchased a 30-year term life policy, about $500,000 for $28 a month. I noticed in the paperwork that the premiums increase every five years. I thought term life policy premiums remain fixed for the life of the policy. Well, there's very few guaranteed level term policies anymore. So if you buy a 15 year or a 20 year level term or a 30 year level term, they usually reserve the right to bump the rates. By practice, they don't. The policy says they have the right to, but by practice, they'll keep them level. Because think about it from the insurance company's perspective. If you bump the rates, what happens? People go get a cheaper policy. Right. Who can't go get a cheaper policy? Sick people. So all they keep are the sick people if they bump the rates. They don't right. want to do that. So you're safe. Okay, next up, this one came in on Twitter. This is at 1133, wants to know, should I trust my works retirement plan alone or should I start a personal retirement plan? You should always have a personal retirement plan. Now, a 401k work retirement plan is a personal plan. You own 401k money. If the company goes broke, you don't lose your money. But if you work for a company, for instance, that provides a pension, that's an asset of that company. And if they go broke, you could lose your pension. So if you're depending only on pensions, that's a bad idea. You should always have your Roth IRAs or a 401k or a 403b or something where you own it going on over to the side. All right. And while we're on that note, Dave, let's talk a little bit about the company stock. I know that you suggest not having a certain percentage over of company stock in your 401k. How much is too much of your company stock? Uh, well, people get really caught up in company stock because they work there and it's kind of a loyalty thing and all of that. And, and that's a real bad idea. I don't believe in single stock investments too much risk, including your company. Mm -hmm. and, and so no more than 10% of your nest egg should be in company stock. Because here's the problem. Company goes broke, you lose all of that money and you lost your job. So you've got too much betting on one company. You know, all I can think of is Enron whenever you say that. That's really scary uh, example for everybody out there. Okay, this one came in exactly. from Facebook. This one's from Jason. He says, what is the best way to manage someone's money who has some bad habits? We're talking drugs, gambling, whatever. I know we have to deal with the real issue, but what do, you, do you have any suggestions on how to limit their loss without completely taking over their finances? That's a tough one. Uh, you would have to take over their finances and they would have to surrender them to you in order for you to do that. You can't legally confiscate someone's life like that unless it was a court appointed situation which wouldn't happen. Here's the deal. You have to deal, like the emailer said, with the core problem which is the addiction. Ultimately, at the end of the day, there is no such thing as a wealthy addict. They all destroy their lives. They all destroy their finances, their relationships. And so how can I be married to my husband who has a drinking problem? My wife has a cocaine problem. They're either going to fix the cocaine problem or you're going to be broke your whole life. All right. That's hard truth. I know sometimes hard to take, but definitely stuff that people need to hear. All right. This is our last question, Dave. came from Kelly on Facebook. She wants to know, my husband is 35, did not contribute to retirement before we met. He is currently doing 15% of his income but only has 13K in retirement. Would you suggest that he contribute more to increase that amount quickly? And if so, how much more? No, I think 15% is fine. If you'll save 15% of your income from age 35 to age 65, he's going to retire with several million dollars as long as he's investing that in good growth stock mutual funds. So I think he's just fine there. And however, we, we use 15% in what we call baby step four. Baby step five is also be doing your kid's college. If that's done or not an issue, and then we move on to baby step six, which is pay off the house early. Now, let's go ahead and get the house paid off. When that's paid off, yeah, I'll put more in retirement. Why? Because we want to have more. Absolutely. All right, Dave, I got to ask you this. Personally, what's next for you? I mean, you've started, as you say, from a coffee table in your uh, living room, and now you've got so much going on. What's the next adventure for Dave Ramsey? 
Well, we're just so excited. I'm loving watching our young leaders. We've got 350 people on our team here now, and we've just relaunched Financial Peace University, and, and we've already had over two million people, a million and a half families go through that uh, over the last couple of decades. So it's a pretty incredible story right here in Nashville, and, and, and you know, this community, our, our hometown has been so good to us. So we're just excited about the talent that's coming on board, joining us and our leadership, and all the different ways we can help people with their money all over the nation. From right here in Brentwood. Not bad from a boy from East Tennessee. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Good to be with you and Nick today. Thanks for having me. We certainly appreciate all the information. Dave Ramsey with us live from Brentwood this morning.